Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, I'm very happy to be joined by Seabrand Yonker. Seabrand got his master's degree from the University of Amsterdam before coming to Stockholm University to pursue his doctoral work. There he's been working in the Zabul group, focusing on asymmetric approaches to allioboration and propargial boration. His most recent work on enantioselective borotropic migration has recently been published in JAX, and in February he'll be finishing up his PhD. And with that, I'll let you get started, Seabran. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Matt, for giving me the opportunity to present my work in your research spotlight. I would like to talk about the preparation of alpha chiral allylboronic acids via a 1 2 borotropic migration. I'd also like to showcase the applications of these allylboronic acids in stereoselective synthesis. Allyl boronates are valuable reagents in organic synthesis due to their configurational stability. This is in contrast to the analogous allyl metal reagents, which often undergo various rearrangements. Few allyl boronates are commercially available. Therefore, both the preparation and synthetic applications of allyl boronates are subjects of study. Synthetic methods for enantioselective introduction of a CF3 group are of high interest to the discovery and production of pharmaceuticals. The enantioselective synthesis of alpha-CF3 boronates is valuable, but has only recently been ventured into. Recently, work by Agarwal and co-workers provides access to a broad variety of chiral alpha-CF3 B-pin compounds by ring opening of a chiral 2-fluoromethyl oxyrane. Arnold and co-workers developed an asymmetric BH insertion of CF3 diazo compounds. The reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme that they have developed through directed evolution. The boronates that they obtain can be hydrolyzed to the corresponding boronic acid under mildly acidic conditions. In the literature, there are several examples of diazo compounds engaging in a 1-2 borotropic migration with organoboronates. An example that I would like to show here is by the group of Lay and co-workers, who demonstrated that boroxines, such as this olefinic boroxine, would react in a 1-2 borotropic migration to obtain this alpha TMS allyl boronate. This TMS diazomethane is commercially available. Another, earlier example, comes from the group of Molander and co-workers, who have developed the homologation of organoboronates, such as this one, using trifluorodiazoethane. The trifluorodiazoethane can be synthesized easily, and recently a review has been published about its preparation and synthetic applications. In the SABO group, we have some prior experience using vinyl as an organocatalyst for enantioselective reactions of organoboronic acids. These are the asymmetric elaborations of ketones, cyclic imines and indoles, as well as the asymmetric propargyoborations of ketones, and hydrazonoesters. The common element in all these reactions is the vinyl organocatalyst that we use in combination with a free boronic acid. The goal that we had in mind for the project I am talking about today is to apply the experience that we have from our previous vinyl catalyzed transformations and apply it to the homologation of boronic acids via a 1-2 borotropic migration with a diazo compound. In the initial phase of the project, we varied many parameters, such as the boronic acid or boroxine R1. From our previous experience, we rationalized that an aliphatic alcohol additive is probably necessary, but more on that later. The diazo compounds that we focused on are trifluorodiazoethane and TMS diazomethane. We also screened several binyl analogs, after which we found diiodobinyl to be the most optimal. For the homologation of this olefinic boroxine using trifluorodiazoethane and iodobinyl as a catalyst, we found these conditions to be optimal. Reaction of 48 hours at 40 degrees in the presence of two equivalents of ethanol and molecular sieves gave this alpha chiral alloboronate in full conversion. This molecule is very air sensitive and cannot be isolated via column chromatography. However, we were able to protect the alloboronate using 1,8-diaminonephthalene, or DenH2, to obtain this allylbedone compound in 69% isolated yield and 98% enantiomeric excess. These allylbedone compounds are still somewhat sensitive to silica gel, and as you can see in this photo, the silica will stain purple over time, so it is important to run the column quickly. 
We were able to separate the two enantiomers of the allylbilin compound on a supercritical fluid LC system using the conditions in the footnote, allowing us to determine the enantiomeric excess of the product. As an alternative to protection with diaminoneftaline, we could also use pinnacle to isolate the corresponding allyl B pin compound, or pinanediol, to obtain the allyl boronic pinanediol ester. Using several olefinic peroxines, we isolated this scope of alpha chiral allyl boronates. For the aliphatic chains, we found that 20% of the organocatalyst was sufficient, but for the products with the aromatic ring directly conjugated to the allyl fragment, which is called cinnamyl, we found that 30% organocatalyst was required to get a good yield in EE. We were able to obtain a crystal structure of the product brominated at the 4 position, which allowed us to assign the stereocenter at the alpha carbon as S. Now, before I show you all the interesting applications that we have found for these chiral allyl boronates, I would like to dive a little deeper into how this reaction works. The first step in the catalytic cycle is the esterification of the boroxene with the ethanol additive. This is necessary because otherwise the boroxene may react directly with the diazo compound, forming a racemic mixture. We call this the background reaction. The ethyl ester is inhibited from reacting with the diazo compound directly, therefore it suppresses the racemic background reaction. Next, the binyl catalyst transesterifies with the ethyl ester, forming the reactive binyl ester and releasing the ethanol. The binyl ester is highly reactive due to the electron-withdrawing nature of the naphthol, making the boron center more electrophilic. The diazoethane coordinates to the electrophilic boron to form an 8-complex, which is followed by an enantioselective borotropic migration to expel leaving group N2. The second role of ethanol in this reaction is to liberate the binyl catalyst through transesterification, or you may call it ethanolysis. The ethanolysis also releases the product. My co-authors and I propose a model for the enantio selection of the borotropic migration. When the diazoethane approaches the binyl ester to form the 8 complex, it can do so using either of its enantiotopic phases. When the diazoethane approaches with its reface towards the boronic ester, we propose that there is a steric clash between the iodine and the CF3 group. This pathway is leading towards the R enantiomer of the product, which we have experimentally observed to be the minor enantiomer. However, when the diazoethane approaches with its psi phase, we think that there is less steric clash and the S enantiomer is formed, which we have found to be the major enantiomer. In order for the migration to occur, it is necessary for the N2 leaving group and the migrating olefin to be antiperiplanar. The antiperiplanar orientation of the migrating group and the leaving group has also been found by the research group of Ley in a previous report of a racemic 1-2 borotropic migration, which you can see in the footnote. If you are a synthetic chemist, and you ever use boronates or boronic acids in the lab, I bet that they are not your final products. Organoboronates are reagents, synthetic tools to make complex molecules. Allyl boronates are no different, and even though during reaction development they were our products, allyl boronates are hardly ever a final product. We make them because we want to use them. One of the most common reactions that allyl boronates engage in is called allyl boration. An allyl boronate can react with an aldehyde in a six-member transition state called a Zimmermann-Trackler transition state, and it will give a homoallylic alcohol. The Zimmermann-Trackler transition state is very reliable and even predictable, meaning that you can quite accurately predict the stereochemical outcome of an allyl boration reaction just by looking at the reactants. I have selected just a handful of references on elaboration, but one can see that it is a very popular research topic. Now I would like to show you some of the in situ applications that we were able to develop for our alpha chiral allyl boronates. This is a one pot reaction, where the first part is the same as what we have seen before, an asymmetric homologation. Then, we use an argon flow to evaporate any leftover diazoethane, and we add one and a half equivalents of four bromobenzaldehyde to obtain this homoallylic alcohol. We were able to do the same allylboration for some of the other allyl boronates that we can make. However, when we added a ketone instead of an aldehyde, the allylboration did not work. 
More on that later. Furthermore, we were also able to directly oxidize the alloboronate with sodium peroxide, affording us this alpha chiral allylic alcohol. We carried out the same procedure to obtain these allylic alcohols. Using some modified conditions, that is, higher temperature and shorter reaction time, we were also able to extend the scope of the enantioselective homologation to the commercially available TMS DASO compound. We could do the in situ allylboration workup with 4 bromobenzaldehyde to obtain this homoallylic alcohol. In the footnote is a method by the group of Lay who have reported a homologation elaboration using TMS diazomethane in a flow reactor with the loss of the TMS group. Therefore, this elaboration is complementary to that method since we retain the TMS group. Unfortunately, it was not possible to protect this boronate with 1,8-diaminonephthalene, but we could add pinene diol for the protection and isolate it as the alpha-TMS pinene diol ester in 99 to 1 diastereomeric ratio, which is equivalent to 98% EE for the alpha-TMS carbon. The reason that we chose BDEN as the main protecting group for our alpha chiral boronates is that it is possible to hydrolyze it. In a previous report by Suginomi and co-workers, aryl BDEN compounds could be hydrolyzed under acidic conditions to give aryl boronic acids. Using similar acidic conditions, we were able to hydrolyze the allyl BDN compounds to afford free allyl boronic acids in near full conversion. Now, as I mentioned before, these allyl boronic acids are very air sensitive and they could definitely not be isolated using chromatography. However, after hydrolysis, you would be able to extract the free allyl boronic acids in any solvent that is not miscible with water. Here you can see the NMR spectrum of the cinnamyl boronic acid. While we could not call this compound isolated, since there are still some of the solvent DME present, it is certainly purified, in the sense that it is more pure than the in situ allyl boronate that we use in the one pot reaction. Going through the process of isolating the allyl BDN compound and subsequently hydrolyzing it to obtain the allyl boronic acid is certainly worth the effort, because it pays off in reactivity. After extracting the allyl boronic acid in toluene, we were able to react it with a broad scope of electrophiles, simply by adding the electrophile and stirring at room temperature with molecular sieves. If you will recall, the in situ elaboration I showed in a previous slide did not work for a ketone, and I said we would get back to it later. So here it is, in 67% isolated yield from the free boronic acid. It also worked for other ketones, including a racemic 2-methyl cyclohexanone, which gave us this alcohol with three adjacent stereocenters as a single diastereomer in 97% EE. We could also use a cyclic imine, such as 3,4-dehydroisoquinoline, as well as indole and 3-methylindole. Furthermore, we could use a hydrazonoester for this elaboration reaction to obtain this chiral alpha amino acid derivative. All products were isolated as a single diastereomer and with full selectivity towards the E double bond. That brings me to the Zimmermann-Traxler model again. Starting from the S enantiomer of the allyl boronic acid, the Zimmermann-Traxler model is in agreement with what we find experimentally. If the ketone would approach the S allyl boronic acid with its reface, it would force the CF3 group in an axial position, which is disfavored. This transition state leads to the RSZ product, which is not what we observe. On the other hand, if the ketone approaches the allyl boronic acid from the psi phase, the CF3 group can adopt the favorable equatorial position in the transition state, leading to the SRE product, which is also the major product that we have found. Lastly, just to be complete, we have tried to see what happens if we add the ketone to the BPIN or pinene diol analog of the boronic acid. Even at elevated temperature, there was no reaction for these boronic esters. However, even if they would undergo elaboration, one can expect the selectivity to be less. This is because a pinnacle boronic ester is a medium sized group, and there might also be strain between the equatorial CF3 group and the pinnacle ester in this case. To summarize, we have developed an asymmetric homologation reaction to generate alpha chiral allyl boronates. We can protect and isolate these allyl boronates using diaminonephthalene. Alternatively, we have shown some in-situ applications, namely 
elaboration and oxidation with sodium peroxide. The isolated allylbdan compounds can be hydrolyzed to give free alpha chiral allylbronic acids. These reactive allylbronic acids can be used in a broad scope of allylborations under mild conditions. I would like to thank all the past and present members of the SABO research group, but in particular, I am grateful for my co-workers on this project, Jai Rajan, Tautvidas, and Marie. I would like to thank Lars Eriksson for his work solving the crystal structure, and of course, Professor Kalman Sabo for his excellent supervision leading this project. If you would like to know more, I invite you to read the paper that has recently appeared in JAX about this project. And you can also find this image of our lab on the inside cover. Lastly, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in for another Research Spotlight episode, and thank you to Seabrand for sharing your work with us. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out. To support this initiative, help us out by telling your peers about this resource. Check our webpage, synthesis-workshop.com, or follow us on Twitter to stay up to date. See you all next time.